Welcome to the Dr. Berkson's Best Health Radio Show. The topic today is birth control pills, the shadow side of birth control pills. But there is a few little housekeeping things that I would love to go over. I've been pondering ways that we can hang out together more. For example, I love doing Facebook postings, and I've been doing those for almost a decade. But now Facebook has a platform which doesn't allow everybody to see every post. So I'm thinking of having a membership site, and the very first level will be a private Facebook group where you could be sure that you get all of those posts, because I put a lot of um, effort into them, and let's say a brand new article comes out. I have 40 years of clinical experience that I can then expound on how this article might relate to the historic information and how it might be thus more helpful for you. Also, I really would love to be able to talk to you more about these postings, talk to you more about what's happening in health. And so I'm going to have on the next level of my membership site, ways that you can hang out with me and hear my sharing of what is cutting edge in health, nutrition, and hormones today, and how it might relate to my body of experience and be helpful for you. And then I'm going to have some professional and other levels. So stay tuned for that. And also, I'm launching a receptor detox. We know that hormones aren't just about the levels in your blood, urine, or saliva. They have to deliver their signals to a receptor. So the receptor functionality is where the rubber meets the road of hormones. And often our receptors are clogged by pollutants and other things like heavy metals. So I am going to have a receptor detox to guide you on how to clean out, unclog your receptors and how you can do this together as a group and then do it on your own a few days a month on an ongoing basis. And certainly for your kids that haven't yet conceived to have hopefully healthier next generation. So there's so much coming down the pike where we can have fun with each other. You know, over the last few years, I've had 13 close friends and colleagues pass away. Only two of those people were older than me. So I feel this need to really share this information forward with you, and that's why I'm coming up with these platforms. I was talking with Eddie Linderman. We went to high school together. We've stayed friends all these many decades together, and he called over Christmas time and my birthday to say hello, and I said, how are you doing? And he says, I feel like time is short. I don't really feel so much like time is short, but I feel like I definitely want to interact with you and get this information out. So go to drlindsayberkson.com. Make sure that you sign up on my website so that you find out when these things come up. And then if you feel like you want to interact or take a closer dive and look, then you can do so. So drlindsayberkson.com, D-R-L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-B-E-R-K-S-O-N.com. And what you can do is be taking a look at what's coming down the the pike. By the way, last night, I thought I'd go sit. I love restaurants where they have a little bar and you can sit and chat with people behind the bar and people at the bar. And there's a Chinese section of town that has a lot of different restaurants with little bars to eat Chinese food. And I love that you can get lots of veggies. I didn't know that there was a Chinese New Year's last night and there was a huge event in the parking lot of the Austin little Chinatown area, and cars were gridlocked trying to find parking spaces and move through the parking lot. And there were numerous people on their phone walking in front of cars right in the middle of the road, oblivious to anyone behind them, holding everything up. So the people in the cars, I could tell, were trying to figure out how to inform the people oblivious on their phones to please just move over a few steps to the side so the traffic could go on, yet not have somebody get mad at you and shoot at you. (laughs) So this one driver in the car just gently tapped their steering wheel, and the person turned around and started screaming and yelling at the driver, all amidst this celebration of a happy new year, which started a lot of other people screaming and yelling because parking spots were very sparse. And I was sitting there in my car wanting to get some Chinese food, thinking, 
why are so many people angry today? It's like free-floating anxiety and anger. You know, we live like kings, better than kings. We live so well, so many of us, honestly, even those of us that are struggling, I just don't understand why the idea of gratitude and the idea of frustration and how to deal with frustration, the understanding of anger, I don't understand why these aren't discussed in school. They're just so important. And you know, when you look back on history, and you look at how people thought way back when, they thought the earth was flat, they thought that you should leech uh, and bloodlet to get people well, and we say, oh my God, how ignorant were they? But you know, people are going to look back years to come in the future at us and say, how ignorant were they? So I'm always aware of the fact that the wise person, the wise person, and I strive for some reason to be a wise person, and I strive to help you be a wiser person. A wise person, I think, keeps an open mind that there's always something that they might not see that is there, that is there to be seen, but they don't yet see it. So they are humbled to the idea that they don't grasp the entire picture. I've written about this in a book called Juicy Souls. If you go to Amazon, called Juicy Souls, Why We Give Our Spirits Away and How to Get Them Back. It's a really cool book. I've been pondering thoughts like this for a while. And if you feel like getting that book, you might want to consider that. Um, We're talking today about birth control pills. And the reason I got on this is because of my Facebook postings. There was a new article that came out from Germany last week that there was a shadow side to birth control. Now, birth control sounds so safe because the first word in it is birth, and birth seems kind of like a sacred word. And about 100 million women are estimated worldwide to be on the pill. So how could 100 million women possibly be prescribed something from their doctors that's not safe? And they're also used not just for birth control, that's why they're called birth control pills, they're used for treating lots of different conditions for heavy bleeding, painful bleeding, polycystic ovarian syndrome, POTS disease, acne. So they're used for a lot more things than preventing pregnancy, but This group of scientists out of Germany said, we've never taken a look at how taking the pill might affect the emotions of a woman. So they did a variety of different analyses, and they were able to say as a conclusion in this study that women on the pill had significant decreased recognition of complex facial awareness, decreased understanding of cues from an intimate partner, be it a family member, a spouse, enough so that the conclusion of this article was that maybe doctors should not hand out scripts of birth control pills without letting women know, you know, this might ding your relationship. If you're having trouble with one or two or three relationships in a row, you might take a look at the pill. Denting, blunting is the term used, your ability to really understand the emotional cues from your partner to work things out and keep them harmonious. Well, I was quite amazed at this because I do lecture on an ongoing basis at A4M in the Gastroenterology Symposium. I have an hour lecture where I explain how birth control pills are linked to causing leaky gut or damage to the gut wall. So I'm very interested, and I'll go more into that in just a few more minutes, into taking a look at the shadow side of birth control pills. Now, maybe one of the reasons that birth control pills might ding our ability to have more sophisticated emotional comprehension, or EQ, is that it rinses out more nutrients out of the body than any other pill that's ever been invented. We know that every single drug rinses some precious critical nutrient out of the body. But birth control pills rinse a kaggle, a group, a huge group of very critical nutrients, for example, like folate. 
and folate is one of the major vitamins that helps protect the lining of the gut from having growth out of control. So if you've had any kind of polyps, you know you probably have a little bit of a difficulty of holding folate in your gut wall because folate is linked to not allowing your gut to grow extra um, extrusions of tissue. So there can be not so dangerous polyps like a pedunculated polyp on a little stem, or there can be really dangerous polyps, real flat ones that look like saran wrap called sessil polyps. But all of those, any history of polyps are a sign that you're not really optimally holding folate in your gut wall. Well, birth control pills just rinse it out of the gut wall and they do other things too. So I talk about that quite a bit at A4M in the link to gut damage, which has been known since the 1970s and very well replicated and understood, but it's not understood by most docs that are in practice. So people aren't given, well, along with the prescriptions of birth, birth control pills, they're not given a list of supplements you should be on. And maybe those supplements, we know folate and B vitamins and zinc, they're all important for hormones and neurotransmitters. Maybe that's the underlying root cause of the emotional potential issues for some of the women on birth control pills, mood issues. Or maybe it's something even bigger than that, which I think it probably is. But when you get a script, a doc doesn't say, hey, you might consider taking a multivitamin and mineral because you're rinsing out a whole bunch of vitamins and minerals out of your body. And these scientists from Germany said, well, maybe we should often also say, if you feel like your emotions just aren't quite under control, they're more a master of you than you a master of them, you should take a look that the birth control pill might be the root cause, not really a psychological situation. So um, I started sleuthing into the literature. This was so fascinating to me. And I realized this wasn't the first time that scientists have taken a look at the emotional adverse consequences of birth control pills that there have been lots of articles on this. So I decided I would have a radio show on this and chat about this so that you can just understand when you're given the script and hand it out like M&Ms and candy, obviously, because there's 100 million women on it. <clears throat> what are some of the concerns you yourself or your daughter or granddaughters might consider if you do want to take it to make it safer for you, or maybe if you're a candidate that shouldn't be taking that and should be looking for alternatives? When I did work for the six or seven years, I did one week out of the month at in Tulsa with Dr. Block at his integrative medical clinic. We used to talk a lot about how it would be so great to have a natural progesterone rather than the synthetic progestin um, birth control that's available now. But how would you do that? And there's so much money involved in it. And how would you ethically have studies where you put people on a natural progesterone? And what if they did get pregnant while you were researching it? But it was always something we were pondering because we realized there is this shadow side to birth control. But for some reason, they're handed out to women as if there is no shadow side. And you should know this is the good parts of it, this is the shadow side parts of it, and you get to choose or you get to figure out how to protect yourself from it because knowledge is power. But if you don't even know that there's these potential issues, you just take it and go on your merry way and then might have downstream issues and not connect one hand to the other. Now, there are a couple of options. What is the pill? There are a couple of options when it comes to the pill. It's usually a combination um, of a synthetic estrogen called ethanyl estradiol and progesterone, and more accurately named progestin because it's a synthetic progestin and a synthetic estrogen. Um, the progestin only is exactly what it sounds like and doesn't have the estrogen inside it, so there's a combo pill with synthetic estrogen and progestin, or there's a progesterone only. And what it does is that, by the way, that synthetic estrogen, ethanyl estradiol, when I was a hormone scholar at Tulane University, the researchers there often used ethanyl estradiol as a control to research other chemicals to see if they were hormone-altering chemicals because ethanyl estradiol is such a powerful hormone-altering chemical. It could be used within the laboratory as a control. So it's a powerful hormone-altering chemical. And by the way, we don't have water systems in most city waters to clean all this stuff out of our water. So if you don't have a water filter on your water, you're getting your 
your husband, your sons, your family is getting a lot of this or a certain amount of this, and hormones work in parts per billion and trillion in your water. So how does a birth control pill work? The first thing it does is it um, suppresses the signals from your brain to your ovaries, so it alters the natural functioning of the reproductive system, and it kind of turns off your brain hormone crosstalk or cross-speak. And it signals to your brain that you don't need to make any hormones anymore. So the big deal is, is it suppresses your hormones. And your hormones, as I've been teaching for many, many years, are your internal physiologic internet system that sends out emails to tissues all over your body, not just about sexy and reproductive things that rule your health. Your gut, your kidneys, your vocal cords, your heart, your colon. All of these signals start being changed because there's less signals if not hardly any, from your own hormone system, but then your body is flushed with endocrine-disrupting hormones, potentially. So um, that's one of the things that happens, is that the pill specifically suppresses hypothalamic gonadotropin-releasing hormone, GNRH, that's the acronym for that, and pituitary gonadotropin secretion. And these are brain structures that control hormone production, and the suppression of these hormones results in luteinizing hormone suppression, and that all signals your ovaries not to ovulate, so no egg is released, and that's how the birth control happens. And um, this is where the combination birth control pill shines a lot more. It's a more effective than the progestin only. And in theory, the pill should be shutting down follicle-stimulating hormone. Um, But in some women, they still continue to develop a few follicles. Um, But that's pretty much how you assess whether a woman is in menopause as you take a look at that FSH. Although for a few years, it can go up and down all over the place, but a postmenopausal woman will have it really high, like over 25 an FSH of over 25, and a premenopausal woman will have it low, like under 5. And um, birth control pills kind of play around with all of this. Now, what's interesting to me is that if you read birth control pill contraindications in literature, it says, well, you know, there's a slight increase risk of stroke if you add the estrogen, because everyone knows that estrogen causes some potential clots, although at A4M we teach that that's not accurate anymore. And even women with clotting genetics like factor V Leiden might successfully take hormone replacement. But um, the percentage that they warn about turns out to be the same close percentage as strokes were caused in the Women's Health Initiative that doctors for about a decade stopped giving women bioidentical or synthetic hormone replacement because there was an increased risk of stroke and everyone got all upset. But it's the same increased risk of stroke in birth control pills that everyone downplays. And even the same thing with breast cancer. There's a small increased risk in breast cancer, although there's a decreased risk of ovarian and uterine cancer and some other health issues, but there's a small increased risk of breast cancer, but everyone says the benefits far outweigh the risks, but the risk is about the same exact risk that the dual hormone arm of the Women Health Initiative got everyone upset about and made doctors decide for protection for the woman and the patient and against themselves for litigation they would not give prescriptions out for a while, that's about the same percentage of risk. So I know when I uh, perused the literature, it says that there's not that much a risk of stroke, but I have to tell you that I think one of the number one causes of stroke, what I've seen in my practice in young women, is because of birth control pills. It can be from the ethanyl estradiol. It acts as a little bit more potent estrogen than estradiol, and it can also be from the progestin only, because research out of the University of Oregon has clearly shown that progestin, that synthetic progesterone form, or form of progesterone, causes vasoconstriction and spasm. And um, there's a lot of doctors who are giving the birth control pill, not just to young women to prevent pregnancy, but to women in perimenopause up until menopause to um, 
act as a cure for their hot flashes and their hormone yo-yoing like we in the functional medicine normally give hormones out. And really, I think it's malpractice to be giving synthetic hormones that have these increased risk of stroke and breast cancer to women who are in a older age. I don't think that they should really ever be used over 35, 30 and 35 years old, even though the conclusions of a lot of the scientists are, well, the benefits are trump the risks. I don't even like using that word trump as a verb right now. But um, I, there's so many ways to use bioidentical hormones or foods or herbs to balance out your hormones. I don't see why you should use synthetic quote, hormone-altering chemicals that have a risk, albeit small, of breast cancer and stroke, but enough that it was the same risk that in the Women's Health Initiative got everybody upset. So there was one story I wanted to talk to you about, a case report. Um, there was a woman who was on uh, ethanyl estradiol and uh, on a progestin in a 23-year-old woman. Uh, ethanyl estradiol use and, and Cyproteron acetate in a 23-year-old woman with stroke, a 23-year-old healthy fitness instructor, she was healthy, was prescribed a combo birth control pill for acne. And three weeks later, she suddenly lost the ability to speak. She arrived at the hospital two hours and 45 minutes after symptom onset. Anyway, she was able to um, have a full recovery uh, and be recurrent ev adverse event free over the next seven years by staying off birth control pills. I've had some women show up in my office in a wheelchair in their early 30s, and it was because they had been on the pill. So I don't, and is that possibly because the pill is rinsing out so many of those nutrients in combination with the um, vasoconstrictive action of the progesterone? I don't know, but... I think it's especially bad to give birth control to perimenopausal women to deal with their hot flashes and hormonal imbalances because of these side effects when you can mitigate this by balancing out their hormones either through food, herbs, or bioidentical hormones. Um, we do know the use of estrogen-containing contraceptives does increase the risk of venous and arteriothromboembolytic events. And... Um, and if you have other risk factors, like you smoke, that's a terrible combination, birth control pills and smoking, bad, bad, bad. Uh, the older you are, like you're 44 instead of 24, if you're obese, if you've got diabetes, hypertension, migraines and headaches, with or without auras, that's not a good sign for somebody to be on the birth control pill. It puts them more at risk for these events of stroke. And um, the thrombogenic mutations, like I said, that you have some clotting factors in your blood. So you've got some snips that make your blood a little bit stickier. Um, so it... Uh, in the literature, it says estrogen-containing methods should be used with caution in women over 40, especially if they have additional cardiovascular risk factors. I think it's malpractice to give aging women, perimenopausal women, synthetic birth control to deal with the symptoms of their hormones going up and down because of their age, hot flashes, anxiety, depression, when that's a higher risk and you can do it with natural progesterone that does not have that risk. doesn't have that risk. If you really peruse literature, like I did in Safe Hormone and Smart Women in my book, if you look at natural progesterone, it either has a protective um, action against these issues, it relaxes the endothelium, the lining of the blood vessels, it improves uh, clotting factors rather than worsens clotting factors. It improves uh, sleeping, hot flashes, well-being. And in some studies, uh, it, there's just no risk at all, but there's no study that shows that natural progesterone has the same risk as the synthetic progestins in the combo birth control or in the progestin-only birth control pill. But if you read the literature, they say... You, to the gynecologists who are trained, there's no reason you shouldn't keep using it. But I say that's not true. And the other thing is you've just learned that the pill does all that it does by shutting up the brain hormone cross beak. So the pill doesn't fix hormonal issues. It shuts them up. 
It suppresses them. It tells your brain to stop talking to your ovaries. The pill for all these other things it's used for besides protecting against pregnancy, painful periods, heavy periods, clotty periods, we get big, big clots, cystic polycystic ovarian syndrome, POTS syndrome. Most kids that are diagnosed with the new dysautonomia illness, POTS are on birth control pills because they have so many menstrual symptoms, many of which would be improved with bioidentical hormones, but the moms don't realize that there's all these issues or shadow side possibilities of the contraceptive pill. So the contraceptive pill, in essence, is a short-term solution to a long-term, more deeply rooted set of issues. And it has a lot of potential downstream negative or shadow effects. So first of all, people don't realize that oral contraception is highly linked the, these ethanyl estradiol and progestins to damaging the gut wall. So it can cause leaky gut and it can cause more than that. It can cause a serious illness called inflammatory bowel disease. I teach this at A4M in an hour course. I go through all arduously, all the literature, starting out in 1970 when there were a few women who developed inflammatory bowel disease within the first month of taking a birth control pill. And the doctor kind of noted that they just started this pill, so he took them off the pill and then it went away. Well, slowly but surely, there started to be more and more really large and larger and larger studies, thousands of participant, millions literally, of participant hours assessing the effects and the link between ethanyl estradiol and progestins or birth control pills, either the combo or single, and the risk of getting a severe inflammatory bowel disease, which gastroenterologists now feel once you get, that's a lifelong diagnosis, although functional medicine docs don't look at that that way. And in this talk, I go through the many, many, many studies that show that if you have the genetic tendency somewhere in your family line to get bowel disease and you go on birth control, this can set you down a very bad path. Not every single woman who goes on birth control pills obviously gets inflammatory bowel disease, but there should be, when you're handing out the scripts, a set of questions. Do you have an immediate family member that has inflammatory bowel disease? And if you do, you might be at an increased risk of getting it yourself if you go on it. Now, because these hormones shut up the brain hormone crosstalk. They stop our own production of our own hormones, in particular estriol, the forgotten estrogen. Estriol upregulates adhesive proteins in the gut wall, little pieces of bubble gum that stick the epithelial cells tightly together that give you your optimal permeability in your gut wall. And when they loosen, you get leaky gut, you get excessive permeability. Estriol upregulates sticky Adhesive, that's why they're called adhesive proteins, that keep your gut single cell layer of gut cells, epithelial cells, standing like soldiers, shoulder to shoulder. But when you're on the birth control pills, it tamps down your own production of this protective gut wall estrogen. And that's one of the reasons that women can be at higher risk of inflammatory bowel disease. Um. When I go through all of the literature, there's so much of it, it's, it's just stunning. It's just, it, you, you just can't even believe that you haven't heard this before with 100 million women on the pill. So usually in the room, there's about 100 medical doctors that are, for whatever personal reason, they want to go from being allopathic docs to now practicing functional medicine. So they're there. They're very motivated. These are like three to five year courses. The weekends, which is one a month, go from seven in the morning till seven at night, four or five days. It's a lot of money, a lot of time to just get in on the beginning of what is functional medicine and how can they change their practice to that. So I've now taught this lecture a number of times and no one, I always ask, is there any, any doctor in the room who has heard about this connection with 
birth control pills and an increased risk of incidence of inflammatory bowel disease. In none of the classrooms in these hotels around the country has anybody said yes. And they sit back in their chair and they just start making these noises like, God, wow, what? How come we didn't learn this in med school? So I say to them, you know, when I was taken Italian at the University of Michigan as one of my minors, there was a word that the Italian teacher would say to us, this word has to have along with it a physical movement. So this word is kind of like, oh my God, OMG on roids is the word. And you're supposed to say the word, which is acci dempoli. And on the dempoli, you're supposed to take your hand and hit your forehead. And it means like, I just can't even believe it. Like, oh my God. So I say to everybody, okay, repeat the word after me. <laughs> acci dempoli. And so the whole audience of docs goes, acci dempoli. I say, now let's do the hand movement. One, two, three, hit your forehead. Okay, now all together now. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Achi Dempoli and hit your forehead. I said, I don't know. That's my answer. Oh my God, who can believe it? It's hard to believe that there's this much data linking birth control pills, not in all women, but in women with a pre existing genetic predisposition. But no, who, who, how do we know who you are? Linking it to inflammatory bowel disease. I can, almost every single young woman who's come into me with inflammatory bowel disease is on birth control pills. And often they were given that along with Accutane at the same time or antibiotics at the same time, which really ups on roids the font size of exposure of stress to their gut wall. So I, I don't know whether it's that big pharma has so much power or whether you only have so much time to cover whatever you cover in med school, and when you have this condition, you give this medication. But it's extraordinary that there is as much data, and none of these docs has ever heard about it. So if you have a daughter who has inflammatory bowel disease, she shouldn't be on birth control pills. And if you have that running in your family, you should really take a look at which ones you're going to be on or how you're going to handle birth control in your young daughter. You just should just know this. And maybe if you were to just take this list of huge nutrients that get rinsed out of the body, folate being the biggest one, which I just told you, really helps keep a healthy growth cycle series in the gut wall. Maybe if you took those, even if you had the risk, maybe you would minimize your manifestation of that illness. Because maybe all of it starts by rinsing out those nutrients. And then if you have a genetic glitch and those nutrients are rinsed out, you're, you know, in double jeopardy. So first of all, you know, birth control pills really affect the gut. So POTS disease patients are really ill, young, mostly teenage girls. It could happen to anybody at any age. But we have an epidemic right now. One out of every 100, the Mayo Clinic tells us, of teenage girls has POTS disease dysautonomia. And most of them are on birth control pills. And they're already very ill. Do we want to make their gut wall any iller? No, we do not. Now, the other thing is it can cause, as I've told you just now, clots and strokes and heart attacks, especially if you're over 35. And I don't even want to tell you how many women 35 years old and older have been told to take birth control pills for their perimenopausal symptoms. I mean, it's crazy. It's just totally crazy. Um, also, it can enhance metabolic disease, maybe because it's rinsing out all those nutrients. It certainly can enhance depression and anxiety. Um, it can ding adrenal and thyroid illness. You know, the thyroid, to make the active form of thyroid, needs zinc and selenium, and zinc is highly rinsed out of the body with the use of birth control pills. So what happens is that downstream you can get thyroid issues, and then the thyroid leans on adrenal. And the pill affects just about every level of thyroid hormone synthesis and utilization. You make less thyroid hormone on the birth control pill. You make less hormones on the birth control pill. You convert less. You use less. Um, so you certainly don't want to be on the birth control if you have thyroid conditions or Hashimoto disease. And also, the birth control pill increases what's called the thyro thyroid binding globulin. 
And when it elevates that, it binds up thyroid hormone, so it makes it much less available. So does any doc hand out, mo- you know, very high level of thyroid disease in young women? Um, I had the Sorbonne scientist, the author of the uh, Toxic Cocktail um, book that where she her whole career is taking a look at the pollution effects on the thyroid and it happens much more to women. Well, most of those women are on birth control. And then they're caught not really ever feeling quite right. And if the doc doesn't know all of these downstream thyroid or hormone issues from the pill, it's hard to tease it apart and help the woman back. Now, I'm going to go over what got me into taking a look at birth control pill with you today. Um, And this was an article that came out in Frontiers of Neuroscience, February 11th, 2019. So this is what started me deciding I was going to do this show. And it was called Oral Contraceptives Impair Complex Emotion Recognition in Healthy Women. And this came from a bunch of different prestigious um, groups in Germany. And these were This was the initial study that found that women with oral contraceptive use were indeed less accurate in the recognition of complex expressions than women who weren't on the pill, in particular during the processing of expressions that were difficult to recognize. Um, These differences in emotion recognition didn't depend on where the woman was in her menstrual cycle, but they said, our findings suggest that birth control, oral birth control, you have many of the same hormones in uh, intrauterine devices, impair women's emotional recognition, EQ, emotional intelligence, EI, um, EI, emotional intelligence, EI, EQ. And they said this should be taken into account when informing women about the side effects of birth control pill. When was anybody getting a, a prescription for birth control pills and they're given the side effects? I just never hear of it. So I went into PubMed my my handy dandy pubmed it is put out by the national institute of health anybody can go there just put in pubmed.com and you can put something in here like oral contraceptives and emotional issues mood issues and i thought i'm going to go take a look and see what they give you the abstracts most of the time every now and then you get a whole free article and that's like Christmas morning. I love when that happens. And I just couldn't believe the amount of articles, how oral contraceptives impact social, emotional behavior, and brain function. Came out in Trends of Cognition and Science 2017. Oral contraceptives positively affect mood in healthy PMS-free women. A longitudinal study came out in Journal of Psychosomatic Research 2017. Cortisol reactivity and emotional memory after psychosocial stress and oral contraceptive users came out in the Journal of Neuroscience Research in 2017. They found that women who are stressed and normally release the stress hormone cortisol in women on birth control pills, that stress release of cortisol is blunted. They don't, they're dulled down a bit. In fact, that's the language in most of the abstracts of most of these studies is that women's emotions are blunted, dented, dulled. That's the language of the scientists describing this. But then, you know, cortisol isn't just a stress hormone. It's an anti-inflammatory hormone. So are these women less able to mount a healthy pro-inflammatory reaction when they need one? Is that possibly part of the issue with birth control pills being linked to inflammatory bowel disease because they can't reduce inflammation in the gut wall because they've got blunted cortisol release? Because remember, birth control pills, as we're learning, blunt almost all your hormones. And this isn't necessarily great. And you're supplying back synthetic estrogen progesterone, but you're not supplying cortisol when you need it, unless that person's adrenal gland is super, super healthy. There were so many articles already looking at birth control pills and the impact on emotion. And it went all the way back, just like it did with gut health that I teach at A4M, it went all the way back to the 1970s. So I sat there by myself going, oh, Achi (laughs) Dampoli. Oh my God, I just can hardly believe it that for this length of time from the 70s where it first started to be noted all the way up to 2019, there has been data accumulating 
that the use of these synthetic hormones blunt, dent, affect, modulate a woman's own moods and ability to interact emotionally. Yet, I am sure that most docs don't know this. Most women on birth control don't know this. I didn't know this. That's why I felt like I had to do a show. So there's um, this one article, How Oral Contraceptives Impact Social Emotional Behavior and Brain Function. And they said, based on, um, we provide an overview of this study that has emerged over the past decade of how birth control pills, and they discuss their ingredients, estradiol and progesterone. This is where all this confusion comes in, because it's really ethanol estradiol and progestin, totally different than estradiol and progesterone, influence social emotional behaviors and underlying brain functions and affect brain systems. You can't read somebody else's facial expressions as well, which could lead to paranoia, some of these researchers suggest. Yet nobody knows about this. Um, One study says we conclude that sex hormones affect uh, the adaptive processes of species to handle moods and interact with people. But it isn't just the sex hormones, it's the synthetic sex hormones. And all this gets more and more convoluted when the scientists don't use the accurate terms describing it in the study. Here's one oral contraceptives positively affect mood in healthy PMS-free women, a longitudinal study. Um... And this comes uh, out of the Leiden University. And the conclusions of this study are that um, women on oral contraception have a higher level of depression. And they showed uh, a decreased variability in affect, indicating, say these researchers, emotional blunting which is in line with previous reports on affect-stabilizing effects of oral contraceptives, which go all the way back to the 1970s, achi dampoli. And they say that these effects occur, you know, when you're on the birth control pill just for a few months. The very first in 1970 link of birth control pills with gut damage were in women who had been on them only a month. Now, adverse issues don't happen to every single woman who takes oral contraception. But maybe there's variations on a theme. Maybe they just don't feel that well, and maybe enough to go on an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety med, and they don't really know where all this is coming from. Here's the article in the Journal of Neuroscience Research 2017, Cortisol Reactivity and Emotional Memory After Psychosocial Stress and Oral Contraceptive Users, and they said in this study, oral contraceptive users typically show a blunted or no cortisol response to psychosocial stress. These findings indicate that oral contraceptive users have distinct cortisol issues, and this affects their memory and recall and can damage it. This is pretty amazing. Here's an article that came out in 2018, um, cohort study of psychiatric adverse events following exposure to, this is an IUD that was the progestin only in the UK. So let's take a look at adverse psychiatric events once a woman goes on a progestin only IUD. Now this is out of the UK. For example, like the One of the contributors was the School of Medicine, University of Dundee in Dundee, UK. And they say, intrauterine devices are implanted, implantable contraception, um, which some brands steadily release uh, progestins over an extended period of time. And exposure to these progestin-releasing intrauterine devices have been associated with depression More recently, a connection to anxiety, panic attacks, sleep issues, and restlessness. Uh, Now, maybe that's due to all those nutrients that birth control pills rinse out, folate, which has a lot to do with your mood, zinc, 
which every single neurotransmitter and hormone needs to work, so your hormones don't work as well, and neither do your neurotransmitters. B vitamins, vitamin C. If you lose these nutrients, you're more at risk for depression, sleep issues, anxiety, et cetera. Maybe that's part of the root cause. But in this study, significant associations were found between this IUD and anxiety and sleep. And they say this warrants additional research. I don't know if it really warrants additional research, but when a doc gives a script for birth control pill to your daughter, your granddaughter, they should chat a little bit about their emotional IQ and their diet and their family history. If there's a lot of mental disease in that family, probably the birth control pill isn't the ideal way to go to treat that acne or even treat pregnancy protection. This article that came out in February 2018, the European Journal of Contraceptive and Reproductive Healthcare, the name of this article is Ongoing or Previous Mental Disorders Predisposed to Adverse Mood Reporting During Combined Oral Contraceptive Use. So they say every doctor should take, you know, have you had issues with depression and anxiety? Have you been on meds for them? And if you have, you probably shouldn't go on the pill. Because what's going to happen is it could make you worse. The conclusion of that article was women with ongoing or previous mental disorders or risk of use of abusing alcohol have greater risk of oral contraceptive-induced mood issues. And this uh, is worth noting during family planning and contraceptive counseling. Achi dampily, achi dampily, achi dampily. It just makes me crazy. Um, so there's there's all kinds of articles on this. So many articles on this. I said I've I've got to talk about this. Um, one one uh, journal in the Hormonal Behavior Journal in 2017. The article I like the title of it. I love titles of articles. It's so cool. The not so bitter pill: effects of combined oral contraceptives on peripheral physiologic indicators of emotional reactivity. And they basically said that um, women on birth control pills have profound brain function changes that modulate their ability to interact. And they go into all of the brain and um, skin conducting and ductants. And they look at the... uh, the levels of of different factors that show that a woman just isn't on her mojo. She just can't have world life perception as free and as dynamic as somebody who's not on the pill. Birth control pill users displayed reduced physiologic reactions indicating negative effects and enhanced physiologic responses. In, um, they took a look at how it affected testosterone, how it affected progesterone. And um, they basically said, when you're on the birth control pill, there can be psychophysiologic, sociologic issues with emotional processing. So if you've got somebody that's been hanging on by their fingernails, really trying to have peace within their life, is the birth control pill an answer for their acne? Um, This article, Journal of Family Practice, do progesterone-only contraceptives lead to more mood changes than other types? And they said no. They all lead a little bit to mood changes. And there was such a large array of this. Um, Now, we do know that birth control pills up the risk a bit of breast cancer, and they up it to the amount, and there's lots of articles on this, like oral contraception and the risk of breast cancer, review the literature, but it decreases the risk of some of the other cancers because it lowers hormone levels. But is this the way that you want to go about it? Because the majority of your immune system lives in your gut wall. The majority of your immune system lives in your gut wall. And so we now know the gut wall can be dinged by birth control pills, even though it has been linked in the literature is lowering um, the risk of some cancers, not all cancers, like it lowers the risk of ovarian and uterine and colorectal cancers, but it increases the risk slightly um, of breast cancer. Now let's take a look at which nutrients so this article says came out July 2013. So it's 
a few years ago in the European Review of Medical Pharmacologic Science. The name of it is Oral Contraceptives and Changes in Nutritional Requirements. Now, this has been known for much longer than 2013, but this came out of Italy, and they really did a nice job of summarizing which nutrients are rinsed out. So oral contraceptives are a major class of prescription prescription drugs. A report from the World Health Organization points out that the influence of oral contraceptives on nutrient requirements is a topic of high clinical relevance and should receive great attention from physicians. It's been shown, said the authors of this study, referring back to the World Health Organization, that key nutrient depletions occur with women on oral contraception. But this also can be with IUDs because they're the same hormones, synthetic hormones. In particular, folic acid or folate, folic acid is the man-made commercial form of folate. Folate is normally found in foliage. That's where it got its name. Um, So it's called folate. Vitamin B2, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, most of the B vitamins are just rinsed out. And now B6 is like a metronome. And it completely oversees the duration, especially of your estrogen hormone, but so also of your cortisol hormone. You have enough B6, you deliver that hormone message for the Goldilocks just perfect right time. Not too little, not too much, just right. You need your B vitamins to help orchestrate a healthier array, a symphony of hormone signals. Well, birth control pills rinse out folic acid, most of the B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin E, minerals, magnesium, selenium, and zinc. Selenium and zinc are the two minerals you need to make T4 go to T3, the active form of thyroid. That's why you don't want to be taking birth control pills if you've got thyroid issues, or it can take a woman who was on the edge and give her thyroid issues. And often there will be an increase in copper because the zinc has been lost, and often copper and zinc live within the body in a ratio. So if there's too little zinc, you start in comparison to have too much copper. Too much copper, when it's not in the Goldilocks amount, can promote inflammation. So this can set the scene for gut wall damage. This can set the scene for mood dysregulation. It can set the scene for... um, other hormone issues. It can set the scene for metabolic problems. Most research, says these scientists, has focused on the levels of the vitamins and minerals in the blood of women who take oral contraceptives compared to women who do not. Since women who take oral contraceptives don't always have adequate diet, say these scientists, may have unhealthy lifestyle, or may suffer from malabsorption, The possibility to prevent vitamin and mineral deficiencies by taking appropriate dietary supplements should be considered a first-line approach by clinicians. A first-line approach by clinicians. I just, I, I, every single time I have a patient, I say, if they're on birth control, is your doc or PA or whoever ever chatted with you about taking backup nutrients? And I've never heard anybody say they have. And here's another article that first was known in 1980, The Nutritional Effects of Oral Contraception, a review. They went over all of, um, and and they also said uh, women tend to be very low in vitamin E in this article. And um, they said in this article that because all those nutrients are rinsed out, women, 80% of women this article, let me go over the title of this article one more time because it's pretty amazing. So it's called uh, Nutritional Effects of Oral Contraceptive Uses back in 1980. So women who are on birth control pill, the majority of them get deficient in vitamin B6. Boy, my good friend, Dr. Alan Gaby, wrote one of the best books on B6 ever, but you need B6 for a lot of stuff. Most, many carpal tunnel syndromes are actually due to a deficiency or insufficiency of B6, not all, but approximately. So this article goes on to say, approximately 80% of all women using oral contraceptives for six months or more tend to get abnormal tryptophan metabolism which is what helps you sleep and feel all right with your world. And they say, if you're on birth control pills, you need to take the nutrients that the pill rinses out. 
And the end of this abstract, which the abstract is a summary of what's in the whole big article, most investigators recommend, most investigators, everyone taking a look scientifically at oral contraceptions, most investigators recommend that oral contraceptive users with vitamin B12 or vitamin C deficiency should be given supplementary vitamins. And then in Journal of Laboratory Clinical Medicine in 1976, it said vitamin B6 status of young men, women, and uh, young men, women, and women using oral contraceptives. And they were able to show that women using oral contraceptives had much lower levels. Several, several subjects uh, on oral contraceptives had subclinical vitamin B6 deficiencies. So you really can't take a drug without some kind of shadow side. Now, that's okay because sometimes you need the drug. Sometimes that woman's in med school and there's no other way. She feels she needs to be on the pill, but she's got to take that pill smart. She's got to be on those supplements. She's got to protect her gut wall. She's got to, or there's other alternatives. There's a cervical cap. There's the diaphragm. There's um, the IUD that used to be just a mechanical IUD. I don't think they sell them anymore, minus the synthetic steroids that are now in them. But knowledge is power. And knowing this allows you to prepare for safety. And not knowing it is really kind of malpractice to hand out these meds without any of this data being handed on a sheet to the woman in front of them. And all those docs in the classes I teach didn't know anything about its link to the gut wall, which is why it's so great to have shows like this that can pass the information forward. If you think this has been helpful, if you like my passion to help your passion, and your future, and your family's future to be better, please go to iTunes and give a review and let people know what you think about this data. And go to drlindsayberkson.com because there's so many fun things coming down the pike. I also am going to be giving a free webinar soon called Are You and Your Doctor Confused About Hormones? Whoever stays to the end of that webinar, I've spent most of my holiday season, this last holiday season, putting together a book on how breast cancer patients can safely take hormones and how testosterone therapy protects against cancer in both men and women. And I've written this ebook in a way that you can hand it to your oncologist so together you can have a cogent conversation. A number of oncologists here in Austin are working along with practitioners here in Austin to utilize testosterone therapy while the woman is on specific medication. And there's solid research to show that this will help her live longer and have a better chance at less recurrence. And it also protects the gent against prostate cancer prior to its manifesting. So I have this book that I've worked hard on. You can get it for free once you're on this webinar. If you're on my email list, you'll find out when the webinar is going to be and all kinds of other goodies. Also, if you'd love to have input into topics that you'd like me to talk about on the show, when you are in my membership group, you will be able to let me know what topics that are burning and churning, like James Taylor's song, that you really want to hear on the show. It's been my honor to share with you the stunning data on birth control pills. So everyone now, one, two, three, Achi Dimpoli, it's hard to believe what we didn't know. And the wise person always holds some little corner of their little soul of humility that maybe there's something about this that I don't know. Because a lot of times when you ask docs, they'll say, Nope, 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 because they're down on what they're not up on. And it's hard to get a really accurate answer from somebody who wants to look like they know everything rather than a wise and soul who knows that none of us see the bigger picture and there's always more to be seen. So today there was more to be seen on birth control, and I hope that maybe this can help a lot of you out there. And if people you love are on it, now you've got a list of nutrients they should be on, or maybe it explains some issues that have arisen since they've been on it, even if they've been on it for two or three or four years. Maybe it just started occurring now. Thank you so much, and have a super day. Bye. Bye.